Good morning, everybody, and happy Father's Day. Uh, we're sorry that we can't be with you guys in person this morning, but we are excited nonetheless to be here through the video and to share the gospel even through a video sermon. So we are excited for that. And as you know, over the past few Sundays, we've been talking a lot about, well, what the pastor wears. Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about how the pastor dresses in different ways. And in fact, up until a few weeks ago, I've dressed a lot like this each and every Sunday. I wore something like a polo or khakis. And it wasn't until Confirmation Sunday, when I was wearing a robe and the students were wearing robes and albs, uh, that I started to dress a little differently. We started to talk about why it is pastors sometimes wear certain clothes. And so I started out by wearing something like this, the clerical, which is probably the thing that most of you guys think of when you think about what a pastor typically looks like or what a pastor wears. But I didn't just wear a clerical either. I also wore a robe called an alb. And around the shoulders, right coming down from each side, I had something on called a stole. And you know what? The stole's been a little bit hard to keep track of because each Sunday it seems that this stole keeps on changing colors. The very first Sunday I wore it, it was this color, red. It was red for Confirmation Sunday. The week after that, it was white for one of the Sundays following Easter. Then it was back to red for Pentecost Sunday. And then it was back to white for Trinity Sunday. And believe it or not, we have another color yet again for this Sunday. This Sunday, the color of the stole is green. And if you're getting a little bit confused and maybe even a little sick of all these color changes happening so quickly, I do have good news for you. You see, we're going to be in green for quite a while. This is our church calendar. And as you can see, the very first Sunday in this church calendar was red. That was Pentecost Sunday. Below that, it was white, and that was Trinity Sunday. And now we have a lot of Sundays that are in the green. These are the Sundays following Pentecost, and we won't be in red until we have Reformation Sunday all the way in October. Now, I know we've been talking a lot lately about clothes and colors and why we wear them, but it is really important to stop and talk about why we do wear the things we wear, why we decorate the church in certain ways. It's important to stop and remember what we're doing, otherwise we might as well not do it at all. And in fact, that's even what the LCMS's official website states. This is what it says. Concerning the use of colors within the church, when altar pyramids are used year after year without much tension given to their message, as well as their care, the pastor, along with his faithful altar guild, would do well to throw away the key to the sacristy and refrain from using altar cloth decorations. Frequent instruction about the church year and its corresponding colors must go hand in hand with its weekly use. So it is important that we stop and talk about these things. They're important. The things we wear, the colors we see, the way we decorate the church, it all helps teach us what God is doing for us. It all has meaning behind it, and it's always been that way too. A few weeks ago, we talked about how God had certain requirements of what he wanted his priests to wear, and how the things that he wanted his priests to wear, they were made up of the same material that the tabernacle was made up. Now, the tabernacle was God's special dwelling place. So by having the priests dress up in the same stuff that the tabernacle was made of, it was almost as if God was saying that these are his representatives to speak his word to his people. We also talked about the stones that could be found on the uniform of the priests. Now, on the shoulder, there were two stones, two stones of onyx. And on each stone, there were six names, six on the left, six on the right, for 12 names total. And these 12 names were the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, on their breastplate, you could also find 12 stones. And each of these stones also represented the 12 tribes of Israel. In this way, whenever the priest put on the uniform, he was no longer one man, but the representative of all of Israel. This meant when he went into the holy place of God, all of Israel went into the holy place. When he offered sacrifices to God, all of Israel was offering sacrifices to God. And when he received forgiveness, all of Israel was receiving forgiveness as well. There was a purpose and a reason why the priests wore what they wore. It helped point them to God, help them show what God was doing for them. And the thing is, that is true for us today as well. The things that I wear, the way we decorate the church, even the songs that Evan picks out for us to sing, all of it teaches us about God and what he has done for us. 
On the Sundays following Easter, we wear white. White is the color of completeness, if you recall. It reminds us that Jesus' work for us has now been complete, that he died on the cross, rose from the dead, made our sins white as snow. White helps us remember what Jesus has done for us, and that, yes, he has made our sins white like snow, that he has forgiven them all, that it is complete for us. We also wear white on Trinity Sunday to remind us of the mystery of the triune God. We have three in one. That's the completeness of our Lord and Savior. We wear red on Confirmation Sunday as it reminds us that our confirmants can only confess that Jesus is their Lord and we can only make that confession through the help of the Holy Spirit. It's through the work of the Holy Spirit and red is his color the color of fire and the Holy Spirit, the fire that we also wear on Pentecost Sunday, when we're reminded how the Spirit worked in that marvelous way for the disciples, appearing on their heads as tongues of fire and also working in the hearts of over 3,000 people that knew faith when they heard the gospel preached to them. They've been called by the gospel. That's all the work of the Holy Spirit. It's why we wear red when we emphasize the things the Holy Spirit does. And we'll wear red again on Reformation Sunday when we're reminded how the Spirit works through people, worked through Luther to bring about the Reformation, and once again that great rediscovery of the gospel, that we are saved by grace through faith alone. And this week we're wearing green. Now green's a color we're going to be seeing a lot, as I mentioned. Green is the color that both represents the Sundays following Pentecost, but also are represented in the Sundays following Epiphany as well. You see, both of these church seasons have an emphasis of growth, growing God's kingdom through missions, especially reaching out uh, to Gentiles, people who weren't descendants of Abraham. There's a big emphasis on reaching out to them and growing God's kingdom through giving them the gospel as well. Also is a time where we can reflect on our own growth, both as individual Christians and as a church as well. So green is a color that best represents that, because as we know, green is the color that represents the Green Bay Packers, and also how things turn green and grow and flourish during the spring and summer. So green is an appropriate color to use during this season of the church year. But that begs the question, where do we see this theme of green, this theme of growth, represented in our gospel reading this morning? One way we see this theme of growth on display is actually where we find Jesus when this reading takes place. In our reading this morning, we find that Jesus has just sailed across the Sea of Galilee and finds himself in a region called Garrisons. And this is opposite of Galilee, so right here. Now, this is important because this region would have been full of Gentile people. In other words, these are the very people who even the disciples at this time don't think that Jesus came for. The disciples at this time think that Jesus came to be their Messiah, not the Messiah for Gentiles. However, Jesus is using this as an opportunity to teach them that he is Messiah for all people. And when I say all people, I mean all people. Even this demon-possessed man that we see Jesus heals in our gospel reading. And while he shows that he came for even this demon-possessed man, something even more interesting happens after Jesus saves this man. After he rids this man of the demon that had terrorized him for years, this man begs to follow Jesus, to go with him. And Jesus says, no. Now, this might sound a little strange to us. After all, we're constantly being told that we should be ready to drop everything we have going on in order to follow Jesus. And here we have this formerly demon-possessed man who's ready to do just that. He's ready to leave everything that he has behind to follow Jesus. And Jesus tells him, no. But there is a good reason why Jesus didn't let this man come with. You see, Jesus told him that he was to stay right where he was, to go home, and to tell his friends, his family, to tell his whole town everything that God had done for him in his life. And that's exactly what this formerly demon-possessed man did. He went home and he told everybody how much God had done for him. And in this way, he was following Jesus. See, sometimes following Jesus means staying put right where you are and spreading his message there. I think that all of us, in one time or another, have thought that in order to follow Jesus, we needed to give up the things that we have in our life, to give them up and go and become a missionary, go out and spread the word. But that's not always the case. More often than not, spreading God's word and following Jesus means staying put right where you are and telling the people God has placed in your lives the wonderful things God has done for you. Green is the color that we wear for this season of the church year. 
It reminds us that Jesus came for all people, not just descendants from Abraham, but for all people, even Gentiles. It reminds us that God can grow his church, even grow it in places that we would never expect. And here's the really cool part from our story. We know from our gospel reading that this man, this formerly demon-possessed man, did indeed go back and tell everybody what God had done for him. In fact, from Mark's reading, we're also told that he goes throughout all the Decapolis telling people what God had done for him. In his hometown, he does this. And that's where our story ends. However, through history and through archaeology, we know a little bit more about this region. In fact, we know that this region was one of the most heavily populated areas of churches in the whole ancient world. And it all started by this man staying right where he was and proclaiming the gospel. This story is so encouraging. And it's also appropriate that it's our gospel reading for the first Sunday when we're wearing green. As this is an amazing story of growth. Seeing that this one person... This one formerly demon-possessed man wanted to follow Jesus so badly, was told that he could not, but rather that he was to stay put, and in that way, he would be following Jesus. Simply spreading the word, telling everybody he knew what God had done for him in his own community. And we see what kind of a growth that had on his community. In the same way, as we reflect on green and, and church growth, we reflect on the growth that we have as individuals, the growth that we have as a church, and we also reflect that God has called us, living hope, to stay put right where we are in our community and simply share the gospel to everybody God has placed in our lives, telling them everything that God has done for us, that he has sent his son to die on the cross for all people by sharing the word and watching the growth that God gives. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys all have a blessed Sunday and we'll see you next week.